just put her in the live stream meeting. I swear there's another. No, maybe not. What do we think of this shirt? Because I feel like ever since I've, yep, I'm live. Hello, and welcome to Tea and Info Tuesday. I'm Lisa, and I'm your librarian. As I was saying, I think now that I've dyed my hair, this shirt doesn't work anymore. Like when my hair was just brown. Although maybe it never worked with my coin. I don't know. It was not the color I thought it was going to be. I'm sure this is what you came to Tea and Info Tuesday for. <laughs> Me babbling about the red of my shirt. I'm just saying, I feel that this is not what I was looking for when I picked this color out. I thought it was more of a, a blue red. Yeah, I'm not, I know. Um, <clears throat> also, today's tea is <laughs> Tazo's Lemon Strawberry Green Tea. Sorry, it's been a weird morning. I feel like I always say that, which just means, I don't know. In ye old plague year of 2021, is anything normal ever? And I don't want to hear it's new normal. There's just, yeah. Because as soon as we settle into that, something else changes. Okay, so I told you what tea I was drinking. And then I forgot that I told you what tea I was drinking. <laughs> That's what kind of a day it is. That's what I'm saying. It's good. Are they having any sugar at home? I made it at home this morning. Usually I make it at work. Um, so I used honey. So none of it tasted like honey until like the bottom fourth. And then that tastes like nothing but honey. So yeah, I don't think that worked out real well. Anyway, welcome to Tea Book Tuesday. We are going to do uh, a variety of things today. So we're going to do romance and historical fiction, which is what this week usually is. There wasn't a ton of romance. Like a lot of it ended up being uh, book two in a series of three or book three in a series of three. And you know, I don't like to do series because I feel like I have to introduce the entire series and it's a whole thing. So I went ahead and add, because there were very few books, I went ahead and added some more off the wall titles that I think sound interesting, uh, but I'll go over those at the end. So the bulk of it's going to be a couple of romance, mostly historical fiction, a couple of oddballs. But as of, as always, we will begin with your favorite part of TNN Book Tuesday, and my favorite part of TNN Book Tuesday, which is a giveaway. Before I get into the new books to give away, uh, Bitter Taste of Murder and Apollo Murders are still available if anybody wants those. And as always, the rules. For getting a book to this giveaway is that you need to tell me what book you want in the comments below along with your MPL location for pickup. So I'll know where to send the book for you. First up is our historical fiction title, The Sweetness of Water by Nathan Harris. Okay. In the waning days of the Civil War, brothers Prentice and Landry, freed by the Emancipation Proclamation, seek refuge on the homestead of George Walker and his wife, Isabel. The walk Oh my God. I set up the microphone. I plugged in the microphone. I sacrificed my wireless mouse, mouse for the microphone. Yeah, it's plugged in. I double checked on Zoom that the microphone was where they were getting my sound. And then I brought the microphone nowhere near me. So in case you haven't heard anything, up until now, the giveaway is working exactly the way it always does. Put the name of the book in the comments below. It's your MPL location for pickup. Um, and as I said, Bitter Taste of Murder and Apollo Murders are still available. I also have Stella Learn to Talk. Uh, I don't think anybody was interested in that one, but I thought it sounded interesting. I don't know. You do you. Okay. Going back to the beginning, since apparently you may not have been able to hear me. For The Sweetness of Water by Nathan Harris. This is a historical fiction novel. In the waning days of the Civil War, brothers Prentice and Landry, freed by the Emancipation, Emancipation Proclamation, seek refuge on the homestead of George Walker and his wife Isabel. The Walkers, racked by the loss of their only son to the war, hire the brothers to work their farm, hoping through an unexpected friendship to staunch their grief. 
Prentice and Landry, meanwhile, plan to save money for the journey north and a chance to reunite with their mother, who was sold away when they were boys. Parallel to their story runs a forbidden romance between two Confederate soldiers. The young men, recently returned from the war to the, old, to the town of Old Ox, hold their trysts in the woods. But when their secret is discovered, the resulting chaos includes a murder, brings compulsive, including murder, brings con convulsive repercussions for the entire community. With candor and sympathy, debut novelist Nathan Harris creates an unforgettable cast of characters depicting Georgia in the violent crucible of the Reconstruction, equal parts beauty and terror, as creeping as it is moving, the sweetness of water is an epic whose grandeur locates humanity and love amid the, the most harrowing circumstances. So that's The Sweetness of Water by Nathan Harris. Next up is, I think this is a romance, but this is The Startup Wife by Tamina Anam, is my guess. And this came out in July. So, meet Asha Ray, brilliant coder and possessor of a pie tattoo. <laughs> Asha is poised to revolutionize artificial intelligence when she is reunited with her high school crush, Cyrus Jones. Cyrus inspires Asha to write a new algorithm. Before she knows it, knows it she's abandoned her PhD program, they've exchanged vows, and they've moved to an exclusive tech incubator called Utopia. Here they are surrounded by quirky futurist engineering, mechanical bees, and lab-grown superfoods. Their platform creates a sensation with millions of users seeking personalized rituals every day. Will their marriage survive the pressures of sudden fame or will Asha become overshadowed by the man everyone is calling the new Messiah? In this gripping, blistering novel, award-winning author Tamina Aman takes on faith and the future with a gimlet eye and a deft touch. Come, from, come for a radical vision of human connection. Stay for the wickedly funny feminist look at startup culture and modern partnership. Can technology, with all its limits and possibilities, disrupt love? So that's the startup wife. Next up is, I think I marked this as contemporary fiction. This is Black Girls Must Die Exhausted. By Jane Allen. Why do I feel like I've talked about this one? I don't know. We'll know in a second. Tabitha Walker is a Black woman with a plan to have it all. At 33, the checklist for the life of her dreams is well underway. Education? Check. Good job? Check. Down payment for a nice house? Check. Dating marriage material? Dating marriage material? Check, check, and check. With a coveted position as a local news reporter, a paper-perfect boyfriend, and even a standing Saturday morning appointment with a reliable hairstylist, everything, everything seems to be falling into place. Then Tabby receives an unexpected diagnosis that brings her picture-perfect life crashing down, jeopardizing the dream she took for granted, having children. Suddenly, as she is faced with an impossible choice between her career, her dream home, and a family of her own. With the help of her best friends, Lail, Layla, possibly Layla, and Alexis, and the generational wisdom of her grandmother and her friend, Mrs. Gretchen. Tabby explores the reaches of modern medicine and tests the limits of her relationships, hoping to salvage her dreams for the future. But the fight is all consuming, demanding a steep price that forces a reckoning for nearly everyone in her life. As Tabby soon learns, her grandmother's age old adage just might still be true. Black girls must die exhausted. So that's that book. I don't think I've talked about it before. Because I think it's another one of those. I, I often don't. We don't get to talk about titles that are sort of at, that aren't a clear genre. Mostly because I've separated these out by genre. But if you want more of these sort of contemporary fiction a well-told story, but doesn't necessarily have an interesting genre, let me know, because I'm always, they're coming across my desk either way. If you're interested in them, I want to make sure that I feature them on the show. This last option is called Summer Fun, 
and it's by Gene Thornton, who I think is, yeah, acclaimed author. This is an epic singular look at fandom, creativity, longing, and trans identity. Gala, a young trans woman, works at a hostel in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. She is obsessed with the Get Happies, the quintessential 1960s Californian band helmed by its resident genius. Why did the band stop make, making music? Why did they never release their rumored album? Album some, Summer Fun. Gala writes letters to the, this, it's B with several dashes. So this is, she's writing letters to the person who was at the forefront of the band. She writes letters to this person that shed light not only on the get happies, but paint an extraordinary portrait of Gala. The parallel narratives of the band and Gala form a dialogue about creation of music, identity, self, and culture, and counterculture. Summer Fun is a brilliant and magical look of trans literature that marks Thornton as one of our most exciting and original novelists. So if you're interested in sort of an LGBT look at 60s California band culture and, you know, the modern world as well. Summer Fun by Gene Thornton. And as I said, if you want any of these, just let me know. I have one copy of each and I will start sending them out right after the show, pretty much. And try to check in a couple of times over the course of the week. It closes on Saturday morning this time. All right. So we've gone over our giveaways. Let me go ahead and share my screen with you. So you can see, well, that's not what I wanted it, but I will switch over to what we want to see. We don't want to see Facebook. We want to see Canva so we can see the slides that I made for you. Because this is still the best way for me to show you the covers of the books. I've considered, oh, someday doing this from where they process the new books out at West, because in some cases we will already have the book and I can hold it up. But in COVID days, that doesn't quite make sense. But, you know, maybe sometime in the future. All right, we are doing October titles for Tea and New Book Tuesday calling it potpourri because it's all sorts of stuff but mostly romance in historical fiction let's go ahead and start off with the first of two romance novels i'm going to feature love comment to subscribe by kathy yardley back in high school lily wang wanted to be popular but she considered herself lucky to be part of a tight group of oddballs and honor students called the nerd herd now in 28 she feels like she's finally on the cusp of succeeding as a beauty influencer if she can hit 5 million subscribers, brands will take notice and she will get her own makeup line. Fellow Nerd Herd alum Tobin has had a lot of success as a YouTube gamer, but the road to online stardom has been rocky. First, he disappointed his parents by dropping out of college, and now after years of pranks, skits, and playthroughs, he's struggling to come up with new content to satisfy his ever-growing fan base. His agents say he needs cross-audience appeal. A new twist. When nerd herd friend of me Lily approaches to Tobin about teaming up to do a video to bolster her brand and reinvent his, he agrees. But when their first collab video goes viral, their relationship heats up too. With the whole internet watching, will these two former misfits finally realize they're perfect for each other? So if you're interested in love, comment, subscribe, it is coming out October 1st. All right, The Brightest Star in Paris by Diana Biller. Emily St. James, prima ballerina of the Paris Opera Ballet and the People's Saint has spent seven years pretending. In the devastating aftermath of the siege of Paris, she made a decision to protect her sister. She became the bland, sweet, pious Saint Amy. The ballet needed Saint Amy, the ballet needed to restore its scandalous reputation. But when her first love reappears and the ghosts of her past come back to haunt her, all her hard-fought safety is threatened. 
Dr. Benedict Moore has never forgotten the girl who helped him embrace life again after he almost lost his. Now he's back in Paris after 12 years for a conference. His goals are to recruit promising new scientists and maybe to see Emily again. When he discovers she's in trouble, he's desperate to help her. After all, he owes her. When she finally agrees to let him help, they disguise their time together with a fake courtship. But reigniting old feelings is dangerous, especially when their lives are an ocean apart. Will they be able to make it out with their hearts intact? So that is The Brightest Star in Paris. It comes out October 12th. That's the end of the romance. We're into the historical fiction now, starting with The Ballad of Laurel Springs by Janet Bird. Beard. Beard. Yeah. Okay. Ten-year-old Grace is in search of a subject for her fifth grade history project when she learns that her four times great-grandfather once stabbed his lover to death. His grisly act was memorialized in a murder ballad, her aunt tells her, so it must be true. But the lessons of that revelation, to be careful of men and desire, are not just graces to learn. Her family's tangled past is part of a dark legacy in which the lives of generations of women are affected by the violence immortalized in folk songs like Knoxville Girl and Pretty Polly, reminding them always to know their place or risk the wages of sin. Janet Beard's steering novel, informed by her love of these haunting ballads, vividly imagines these women, defined by the secrets they keep, the surprises they uncover, and the lurking sense of menace that follows them throughout their lives. With the same rich sense of place as Bloodroot or Serena, The Ballad of Laurel Springs is an unforgettable portrait of women fighting to make a safe place in the world for themselves and the people they love. This is from the internationally best-selling author of Atomic City Girls, which was very popular and a lot of people liked it. So if you're interested in The Ballad of Laurel Springs, it comes out October 5th. All right. When Two Feathers Fell from the Sky by Margaret Verby. Two Feathers, a young Cherokee horse diver on loan to Glendale Park Zoo from a Wild West show, is determined to find her own way in the world. Two's closest friend in Glendale is Hank Crawford, who loves horses almost as much as she does. He is part of a high-achieving, land-owning Black family. Neither Two nor, nor Hank fit easily into the highly segregated society of 1920s Nashville. When disaster strikes during one of Two's shows, strange things start to happen at the park. Vestiges of the ancient past begin to surface, apparitions appear and then the hippo mysteriously falls ill <laughs> that feels like that should have ended on a more um, climactic note but instead a hippo fill falls ill anyway at the same time two dodges her unsettling lurking admirer and bonds with clive glendale zookeeper and a world war one veteran who is haunted literally by horrific memories of war to get to the bottom of it, an eclectic cast of park performers, employees, and even the wealthy stakeholders must come together, making When Two Feathers Fell from the Sky an unforgettable and irresistible tale of exotic animals, lingering spirits, and unexpected friendship. This got the, a starred review from Publishers Weekly. The author also was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize a while back, which is praise indeed. So if you're interested in when two feathers fell from the sky, it comes out October 12th. Okay, the description for this one. Sometimes, okay, some, some of these descriptions, most of them were meant to be read silently in your mind. So when I try to read them out loud to you, they end up a little convoluted because they often have very long sentences, which doesn't work when you're speaking. This one's especially bad. I think someone pulled out a thesaurus so that they could get every fancy $10 word. Should be a $100 word now. But anyway, every, every single large convoluted sentence that they could possibly construct is in here. And it's only like two paragraphs long. So I've written my own much shorter description, which is, what if Beethoven traveled to America 
and took a commission to write a biblical orato from a Boston society. So it's about Beethoven being in America in America's early years, obviously, um, because Beethoven died in the 1820s and what that would be like and what his observations would be and the people that he would connect with and stuff like that. This got starred reviews from both Kirkus and Publishers Weekly. And as I've said, almost every time I've mentioned this magazine, Kirkus is the, the book review uh, publication that librarians read when we want to find out why not to buy a book. Their praise is rare and uh, expertly given, but they like this. So if you're interested in Mr. Beethoven, it comes out October 19th. All right, the last checkmate. This should be especially interesting for any of you fans of the Queen's Gambit and uh, World War II fiction. This is by Gabriella Saab. Maria is many things, daughter, avid chess player, and a member of the Polish underground resistance in Nazi-occupied Nazi Warsaw. I think that's how you make a list. Daughter, chess player, underground resistance in Warsaw. Like, anyway, captured by the Gestapo, not funny. She is imprisoned in Auschwitz while her family is sent to their deaths. Very much not funny. I'm still laughing at something I said earlier. Please ignore that. I have the church giggles. It happens. Realizing her ability to play chess, the sadistic camp deputy intends to use her as a chess opponent to entertain the camp guards. However, once he tires of utilizing her skills, he has every intention of killing her. Befriended by a Catholic priest, Maria attempts to overcome her grief and see the value in survival. Literally playing for her life through four grueling years, her strategy is simple. Live, fight, survive. By clearly in provoking the deputy's volatile nature in front of his superiors, Maria intends to orchestrate his downfall. Only then will she have a chance to evade the fate awaiting her and see him brought to justice. As she carries her, out her plan and the war nears its end, she discovers the camp deputy has survived. And so Maria, vowing still to avenge the murder of her family, challenges her former nemesis to one final game, certain to end in life or death, in failure or justice. If Maria can bear to face him and her past one last time. Uh, this is a first novel from Gabriella Saab. She hasn't written it. She hasn't written it at the very least a full-length novel, novel before. If you are interested in The Last Checkmate, it comes out October 19th. All right. Let the Wild Grasses Grow. This is one of those books where they give you a lot of like quotes um, from other authors saying how fabulous the book is because the description is relatively short and simple. Although I don't think that it's a bad thing. I think in some ways it's a good thing. If you can explain what the book is about fairly simply, then it's a pretty straightforward book. Okay, so Let the Wild Grasses Grow by Case Johnston. It chronicles the lives of Della Chavez and John Cordova, childhood friends separated by a tragic accident who find each other again during World War II after leading lives of struggle the Great Depression, the Dust Bowl, and for John, abuse at the hands of his grandfather. This sweeping American love story celebrates the power of home landscapes, family heritage, and first loves. So if you are interested in Let the Wild Grasses Grow, it comes out October 15th. All right, so here's my two oddball titles. You'll tell me what you think of them. They're, they're unique. That's, that's the whole idea, right? Okay. The Survivors by Alex Shulman. In the wake of their mother's death, three estranged brothers returned to the lakeside cottage where over two decades before, an unspeakable accident forever altered their family. There is not else the oldest who can't escape his suffocating home soon enough, Pierre, the youngest, easily bullied and quick to lash out, and Benjamin, always the family's nerve center, perpetually on the lookout for triggers and trap doors in a volatile home where the children were left to fend for themselves, competing for their father's favor and their mother's elusive love. But as the years have unfolded, Benjamin has grown increasingly untethered from reality, 
frozen in place while life carries on around them. And between them brothers, a dangerous current now vibrates. What really happened at that summer day when everything was blown to pieces? This got a starred review from Kirkus, so we know it's probably good. Uh, they're considering it to be in the vein of the dinner and atonement. It's also already sold. It's already a bestseller in like 30 countries. So I kind of assume this was not originally written in English and this is our translation. Um, but if you're interested in the survivors, it comes out October 5th. Laser Rider 2, a novel by Tamara Shopskin. Laser Rider 2 is a coming of age tale set in a legendary 90s indie NYC Mac repair shop, TechServe. A voyage back in time to when the internet was new, when New York City was gritty, and when Apple made offbeat computers for weirdos. Our guide is Claire, a 19 year old who barely speaks to her bohemian co workers, but knows when it's time to snap on an anti static bracelet. Tamara Shopsian brings us a classically New York novel that couldn't feel more timely, interweaving the history of digital technology with a tale both touchingly human and delightfully technical. Shopskin brings an idiosyncratic cast of characters to life with a light touch, a sharp eye, and an unmistakable voice. Filled with pixelated philosophy and lots of printers, Laser Rider 2 is at its heart a parable about an apple. So the author of this, Tamara Shopskin, is an illustrator for the New York Times and uh, the New Yorker. I kind of assume there's going to be illustrations because of that. I don't know. I don't know. I think, and which could be interesting and be a slightly different way of doing a novel. But this is the author's first novel. This book received a star review from Publishers Weekly. If you're interested in Laser Writer 2, it comes out October 12th. All right, we are done for today. Don't forget to enter the giveaway if you want one of these books. Tell me the name of the book. Tell me the MBO location you want for pickup. As always, I send out the newsletter at 11 o'clock. If you're not subscribed, please do so. The link is in the uh, description below. And our Goodreads group continues to grow and thrive. I will be adding a discussion board post about the books that I eliminated from today's episode. So if you really wanted more to see if your favorite romance series, or I think there's a couple of historical fiction in there too, um, if they got eliminated and you want to know that they're coming out, what they're about and stuff, go ahead and see that discussion board post. Next week, we're going to do my favorite genres, which is science fiction, fantasy, and horror. See you then. Nope, nope. See, it's old slides. We ignore the old slides because we're going to. Wait, wait. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Found the button. Okay. Have a good week, guys. Bye.